I didn't take this into account when I started the save. This is the first save I've actually played with almost the maximum amount of players that you can have in the game. I've got a computer that can handle it. it darn well, it better be able to handle it. I paid a lot of money for it. And it's doing a really good job so far. Um, I've got 424,000 players loaded. I, I downloaded the Max Database from uh, the workshop, and I'm using that. Um, as you can see, we've upgraded our recruitment package to an upper tier package. Uh, I've still got 11 members unassigned, but a lot of those are analysts in that. Uh, I've increased the scouting budget a little bit. I always have a tendency to do that, just to make sure we don't go over. Uh, our transfer budget, 7.96 million. I still have 91,000 pounds of payroll. This is every player in the game. And one of the things I like doing, especially in saves where the club wants youth players, the best way I have found to find a diamond in the rough is this search right here. Your age is between 15 and 18. Their international caps is at least one, or they've played for the national team main, or they've played for the national team U20, U2019, uh, ah, geez. Or they've played for the national team uh, U20 or U21, or they've played for the U19 team, or their youth appearances is at least one. I do that with this save, I get 3,092 players. It's too big for a short list. I think what I'm going to have to do is break it down into uh, 16 and 17 year olds. I have it saved as U21 internationals, but that is just simply not going to be enough. Now the good news is this gives you every youth player in the game who has any sort of international appearance whatsoever. The bad news is if you put them on a short list, you're always going to get notifications on them. So it can kind of slow things down in that regard. But at the same time, if it's a player that you can tell just by looking at them that they're not good, they're not going to be something or someone you take into account in the future, you can just drop them off the short list then. So I'll do that off offline here. But one of the things that you know we can do is we sort by youth appearances. So Joe Scully for uh, the USA, Borussia Mönchengladbach, he is, I could have sworn I threw age on this one, and it looks like I didn't. Okay. Insert column, general age. Is 18 years old, Borussia Mönchengladbach, 19 youth appearances, one goal. He is playing for the American U23 squad. He's not bad as a defensive right back. 19 years old, he could be better. He has enough international appearances. If we look at his record, and this is something you have to take into account when you live in, when you're playing in England, he's played not a lot of games for Borussia Mönchen. Um, he's been playing for their B squad, and so this is one of those cases where you would, you know, if you're interested in him at least anytime soon, you ask the agent about his availability. Um, we're looking at a few players right now would likely gain a work permit. In this case, he would likely gain a work permit. And frankly, I'm kind of in the need for a young defensive right back, so we are going to scout him. Now, push comes to shove, you can always move him to another short list of scouted players and take him off the international list. And then, of course, if you're scouting them, you know, they'll their, their color will change. Uh, let's see, who's next? A lot of Americans. Ricardo Pepe, uh, Hassan Ayari, who plays for Tunisia, is an under 18 guy. What does he play? He is a winger. Pacey. Eh, some of the other things are a little bit low. But you know what? Hey. Scout him. I got a scout in North America. Maybe my North American guy will scout him. You can also look and see who they're wanted by. He's wanted by Oldham. Not the, not the highest ranked club. Not the lowest ranked club. But this is where, in all honesty, you find a lot of diamonds in the rough. The best player I've ever had in my FM career, short as it's been, um, was a guy on FM17 named Peter Kolarik. Uh, you can read that save on the SI forums. I was playing USL Dunkirk. I took them from the third division in France all the way up to the top, and that was FM17. So, of course, PSG was spending money like they printed it, and I'm fairly sure they were, at least in the back room anyways. Anyhow, I found Kolarik through ScreenFlow, which I'm going to be talking about next, but this is also another way you could find players like that. He was 17 years old, and he had a start for the Slovakian national team in which he scored a goal. That kind of stood out to me. I took a look at him, and his attributes just absolutely jumped out at me. They were already equivalent to a player who was starting for not top-tier football, but maybe top of second tier, bottom of first tier football, and I did everything I could to sign him. And I eventually did, and I did everything I could to keep him on the team, and I eventually did. He turned into the world's best footballer. I kid you not. 
Uh, last season, I was the head coach at Dunkirk. He scored 73 goals across all competitions, which is really, really good. And then his strike partner scored 33 goals across all competitions. We, we almost went undefeated. It was, it was an incredible season. Um, this is a good way to kind of get a jump on things. Screen flow is another way, and we're going to talk about that now. That, it's a very good tool, but it's also one that's really kind of a pain to set up. The way you do it is, you go up into your preferences, you go to most common, and you go to custom screen flow. And it's going to bring this interface up. It's not the most friendly interface. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. And it takes forever to set up properly, especially if you're doing a big save like I am and you're wanting to scout. Well, let me rephrase that. You're wanting to get a lot of reports on a lot of competitions like I am. This allows you to select competitions in every country and every league you have loaded. And the way you set this up is uh, Africa. So we are going to go... So we've selected the African Under-20 Cup of Nations. For our screen, we're going to select Stats Player Overview. Uh, minimum interview is NA. Scope is on match day. You do not want to stop the game. Then you click Add Screen. And you do this for every competition you want to add. I want to look at every Under-23 competition we possibly can. Palace is interested in building through the youth system. We want to look at youth players. We want to get a jump on them. This is not a scouting tool per se. It is a reporting tool. What will happen is when something happens in an under in an African under 20 Cup of Nations game, you will get a report. And you can customize that report a little bit. Um, but it'll give you like top goal scores, top defenders. Things like that. You know, there's there's a lot of statistics that you can look at. They haven't been integrated into the data hub yet. I would suspect they will be in future FMs. If they aren't, that's a really missed opportunity. Um, being able to save your screen flows and export them and load them into games like you would shortlist is also a missed opportunity, but I've bugged SI about that before. But what that also lets you do is if you have a player on your shortlist, they'll show up as a different color usually, like mine are showing up as red. And I believe, and I haven't verified this for FM22 because this was bugged in the beta, I believe if you have a player on your shortlist who's showing up in these reports, he'll show up as on your shortlist, and you can kind of get a jump on that as well. But sometimes you'll get a report from maybe a competition you don't know a lot about. One of the things that's interesting is like if you go to South America and you load the Brazilian leagues, you get... Oh, look, here's all the state championships. I don't load these because, frankly, there's a ton of them. But if you're a glutton for punishment, and sometimes I am when it comes to FM, but I'm not in this case, you load all of these up. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you see a 17-year-old Brazilian from the under-20 Espiritu Santo State Championship scoring five goals in three games. And he has a really good pass completion. And then the next thing you know, um, you know, when you go every couple of years to regenerate your under uh, your, your youth internationals, he's showing up on there and he's moved up from the third division to the second division and no one's interested in him, at least thus far, you send a scout out to fully scout him. And that's when you find your version of Peter Clark. It's a great tool to assist in your scouting because essentially what, it, what, what this is giving you is match day reports which are easily available online. If I wanted to look up the under-20 Espiritu, uh, the Santo Espiritu, I'm totally blanking on that name now. Good gracious. If I wanted to look up the results of, assuming it was going on, of the under-20 Espiritu Santo State Championship, I could go online and Google it, and it would give me essentially the same results I'm getting it here. So it just the, the issue is it takes a lot of time to set this up. How much time? Uh, it's the bottom of the hour now. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to load up every competition I want to load, and then we'll figure out how long it took me. Now, granted, I am not the most deft when it comes to uh, selecting things, but you'll see. It's been about 10 minutes. This is all the major world competitions 
under Af African under 20 Cup of Nations, Cup of Nations qualifying, under 23 Cup of Nations, Cup of Nations qualifying, so on and so forth. You do have a nice little icon at the side that lets you know what's going on. Um, at this point here, this is where I will eventually, not right now, but eventually go into uh, each country and start loading most, if not all, of the under 19 and under 23 um, uh, competitions. So the nice thing is they do list it by country. So, you know, if you're not interested in the Chinese uh, under-19 Superdivision League A or B, you don't have to load it, but you can if you want. You can always go back and add and subtract stuff. The other thing you're going to want to do is go to World, or is it in each country? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I knew I remembered eventually. You have to go to the country and the league you're looking at. And then like, so I'm looking at English Premier Division. I select that. One of your report options is transfer rumors. You can select that. And then you can set this for during the transfer window. And then your minimum interval, set it for like every three days. And then every three days... In the transfer market window, you'll get a list of rumors. Hey, teams are looking at this guy. Teams are looking at that guy. And every once in a while, it'll jog your memory about, hey, I looked at that guy way back when. He was pretty good. That seems to be a decent price for him. Let's go take a look at him sort of thing. We'll go ahead and click add the screen. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure visit new screen automatically is on. This will automatically bring up the report from the screen flow. You click uh, confirm. It'll load the new image into the new skin. And then, during the course of playing the game, hopefully, you should get a screen that pops up when those competitions are underway. In the beta, it wasn't working. I did fill out a bug report for it. I got the transfer rumor news. I didn't get a lot of competition results. In fact, I think I only got results from maybe two competitions. But going forward in this save, at least, if and when those start popping up, I'll spend a little bit of time on those to show you what's going on. Uh, as we're going through the week here, the transfer window is over. Uh, we did make a couple more pickups. Some of them were, well, a couple of them were, I'm not going to say panic buys, but more for depth than anything else. Uh, we did buy Steve Sessignon from Fulham for $5.75 million, and then he promptly hurt himself, but he, he'll be back shortly. Ted and Mengi, who, I'll be honest, I don't know that name. I don't know if he's called something else. I have the real name fix in. Uh, you know, we're playing Manchester United. Hopefully they don't get too mad. Uh, he's a youth player from uh, United. Defensive right back, defensive center back. Can play defensive left back in a pinch if I need him to. Two and a half star current ability. Four and a half star potential ability. 19 years old. I brought him in because Manchester didn't really want anything for him. They just want him to get playing time. And I got him here on a squad roll. He'll be on the bench. He'll get some starts. Physically... He's not too bad. He brings the ball out of defense. He's got decent jumping. He's got good pace. Mentally, he's a little low in some areas. The nine bravery is good, but it's not horrible. Um, it's probably a little bit on the low side for this level of football, maybe. Aggression is kind of the same way, but he's got good determination. Okay decision-making and concentration. Good teamwork. Pretty good positioning, which is actually, I think, kind of key, especially considering the changes they've made to the match engine. And, and I think positioning is going to play a lot into that. Um, he can't cross, which is really annoying as a defensive right back. We're trying to train him up on that. His marking and his tackling are okay. He's an okay passer. His technique's decent. He's got good first touch, though. So, actually, that's what we need to do. I just train. I just changed his cross. I just, uh, yeah, words. I just changed his training, and I need to put it on crossing because we need to get that up, especially if he is going to start playing a few more games. Schedule-wise, we've been really kind of up and down is probably the best words for it. Even though the results don't look like it, I get the impression this is going to be a squad that plays, that, that's going to do one of two things. It's going to play down to its opponent's level and lose, or it's going to play down to its opponent's level and do slightly better than them and win. And we seem to be doing that because Newcastle, we drew with three all. And frankly, we should have beat them. Um, they got a goal from Callum Wilson in the 87th minute. The team just slacked off at the end. It was a nice goal. They clawed the drawback. In the Carabao Cup against Brentford, Mateta had a hat-trick's worth of goals. And that was after Anderson got sent off. Um, 
Brentford had a decent amount of chances after that for whatever reason. They just could not make them pay. 23 shots, 11 on target. Guiara was, was good. He was on a 7-8. Everyone else was kind of, eh, you know, Edwards and Gallagher were, were, were good. We did just enough to win. Uh, then we played Brentford again, uh, literally four days later in the Premier League, and we absolutely stomped them 5-0. Mateta, hat tricks worth goals, Rita Wall goal, Olisa goal. I think a lot of that was due to the fact that their team was tired. We, they didn't do a lot of rotation. I don't know if they have the squad depth or not, but this was a really good game for us. Then again, I remember Brentford was one of the teams picked to be relegated. Against Watford, this was an unexpected result. We beat them 4-1. Edward Abrasa goals. Mengi got a goal. Hughes got a goal in the 75th minute. Firminia broke up the clean sheet in the 41st minute. Everybody performed well above average except Guiada, and I'm not quite sure why. Uh, so today, we're going to be playing Man United, and we drew Middlesbrough in the Carabao Cup third round match. So we're going to play those two games. Currently, it's very early in the season. Um, Man United has played five games. We've played four. Mateta leads us with seven goals and an 8.38 rating. Gallagher and Mateta each have three assists. Martin Kelly is our best passer, but he's only played a little bit, so I don't know that they have a minimum number of passes they're taking into consideration when, when they're talking about that. Mateta has three players of the Magic Card. Mateta has three players of the Magic Awards. Milovic, there we go. Milovic and Gallagher each have three yellow cards, and Anderson got the one red card. So, uh, Mengi is ineligible for this match because he's because it would be his home club. Uh, Schlipp is out. He twists his ankle. Eze is still out. And uh, my young defensive right back is still out. And, of course, that really kind of bites because I brought in Mengi to take his spot. And, of course, we're playing Man United right away. So, we will get to that game here in just a bit. So, this is actually nice. This, how, this is how I know it's kind of sort of working. This is the match report from the screen flow for the Under-19 Champions Cup. There's been no matches played yet, though. And this is what the screen flow report will look like. Um, if you click off of it, you click, you, if you click off of it or hit continue, you can't back arrow to it because it's not essentially a stored screen. But this is the U19 Champions Cup. They just started playing. So you got Villarreal, Lille, Barcelona, Atletico Madrid. It lists the players. Um, I am almost positive these guys would be on, well, I mean, you know what, let's check something out here. We'll check Tiago Goralnik. No youth caps. Okay, so that's why he is not showing up as a different color. But if we click back, we'll go there. Um, you will you can sort by things like this, most shots, player overview, key passes. You have you know, your basic uh, statistics up here. Uh, most tackles one. The other thing you can do is you can go down here and customize these. Now, once you customize these, they should stay the same. I know that happens on the base skin. This is not the base skin. This is the FM Enhanced skin for Zealand, hence the Z up there. I've had experiences in the past with other skins where this information here changes from report to reports like my u21 report will look completely different than this report and after a while you just kind of throw your hands up in the air and say okay it happens um so what we got there we got goals assists shots on target uh we want pass completion there what i try and do is set up the top for um attacking statistics and the bottom for defensive statistics so key tackles key headers um, tackles per 90 minutes tackles one now the other thing is up here you can also check as an example player detailed and you know, distance covered. Okay, Medi Shafti or Medi Shafii covered 8.95 miles. You know, so you click on them. Now, I have a tribute's mask, so I'm not going to get everything. But every once in a while, you know, you'll find a youth player who, uh, you know what, we'll go back to stats player overview. Um, as an example, we know Alex Gennard is on the Atletico Madrid under 19s. They have a fairly decent. Under, uh, under 19 squad. They have a fairly good youth system. So you take a look at him from here and you can say, okay, he's got probably decent pace, probably decent first touch, probably decent finishing. He's two and a half star current ability as an attacking midfielder and a midfielder. Maybe you put him on a short list. Maybe you send a scout after him now. He doesn't have any youth appearances yet, 
And so this is a way to kind of see those players who do get some playing time, who are doing well, and lets you kind of get a leg up on them and, and get in before anyone else. This comes in handy in a lot of the smaller countries. Uh, my Kaiser Slaughter and Save, I found a guy in Brazil who ended up being very, very good. Uh, I brought him in. He used the club as a stepping stone and then uh, went on to be a Ballon d'Or winner at PSG. Same thing in my real high-end save from a couple years ago. Found another wonder kid in Brazil, snapped him up before everybody else could. Used the club as a stepping stone. Made a ton of money off of him after he went to PSG, of course. So, uh, especially the, the thing I'm interested in, especially with this version of FM21 with dynamic youth ratings and stuff like that, is what's this going to portend in the future? Especially with clubs that traditionally have very good youth systems. Um, is, the, is the computer going to improve those as they go on? Can they stagnate and fall? Who knows? Uh, one of the things I'm interested in is, so it's like Galatasaray is in the Turkish Super League. They have uh, adequate youth academy coaching, fairly basic youth recruitment, adequate facilities, adequate youth facilities. You know, but, you know, maybe you get a club like Fenerbahce or some of the clubs in, in uh, Bosnia or Serbia or something like that. You know, that they're not Red Star or Dinamo, but they're very, very good. They can have some quality youngsters coming through them. Um, I just clicked back and it went on there. Oh, it's if you click continue. If you don't, if you, as long as you don't click continue, you can come back to the screen, no problem. You know, but this is a way to track those players who maybe are flying a little bit under the radar at the moment. You can get a jump on them. And then, you know, buy them cheap, use them up as best you can, let them use your club as a stepping stone. Maybe you can convince them to stay. If not, you can turn around and sell them for big money. I made almost 90 million pounds off that Brazilian wonder kit I found a couple of seasons ago. Well, I take that back. That was a personal save. But I did make 90 million pounds off of them. I paid 5 million pounds to get them from this, from, um, it was, I'm totally not blanking on the name now because I didn't have the real name fix on and they just had the initials, but it was one of those cases where he was playing for a club in Brazil that was not the best, but I scouted him out. He was already grading out better than uh, my under 23 striker, who was actually not that bad. He got a lot of stars because my main striker went down, brought him in for 5 million uh, pounds, kept him for three and a half years. Real Madrid came calling and he left for 87 million pounds. You know, that's found money right there. The thing is, this takes a little bit of time and energy. I like doing this. I like the scouting aspect of the game. I like going out and finding the diamond in the rough before anyone else. And frankly, with this database with 455,000 players in it, there's a lot of diamonds to be found. So even smaller data, even with smaller databases, there's a lot of diamonds to be found. So, you know, if, if you like scouting, if you like doing that, add screen flow to your game. It, it takes up a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of setting up. The thing that really sucks is that it's not a view. You can't save it and import it into another save. You have to go through and set it up each time. And that's kind of annoying. But it's just another arrow in your quiver, so to speak, to give you a leg up on the competition and to beat the computer at its own game. And frankly, that's enough about that right now. we got this Man United game coming up. FM never fails to amaze me. It always does this, especially after I pause recording. This was the next stream... That this was the next screen that came up, and the one thing that caught my eye almost right away was this guy right here, Doro Dabo. And what caught my eye is that not that he had the one goal in only 39 minutes of relief time with two shots on target, it's the fact that he's a Senegalese under 18 at Porto. Now, I know Porto has a fairly good youth system. I don't know how deep into Senegal they are. It kind of makes sense considering the history of that area and so on and so forth. But if we take a look at him, he's listed because he's surplus to requirements. He's wanted by Academica and Varzim. Maybe not the biggest teams out there, but those are solid, respectable teams for, for the areas they play in, for the leagues they play in. We know he has good acceleration. We know he has good pace. He has absolutely horrible jumping reach. He's 5'10". His strength is on the low side. He probably has decent finishing. He has good first touch. He has good heading. And he has good passing. Now, my color scheme is blue for good. My, my color scheme is blue for really good, green for good, yellow for average, and red for really bad. He's two and a half star current ability, at least right now, at Poacher. At least I'm reading that as two star current ability. It's, it's probably just how well he does the role in the duty. If we take a look at him history wise, 
I don't know what, okay, he's from unknown club. He's obviously a free agent signing to Porto. They don't like what they see. Maybe Porto is a bit too discriminating. In this case, he doesn't have any youth caps for Senegal. That's that's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. But this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying you find players like this. We're gonna throw we're gonna throw a scout at him, if only to see what he grades out at. You know, it could be one of those cases where he's a three star potential guy. I'm just using this as an example. I can't sign him at Palace simply because if I tried, he wouldn't get a work permit and he would languish on the bench, and then I'd have to let him go for any amount of money we brought him over. He'd be zero, but you know, he'd be taking up space. I wouldn't be able to loan him out, I suspect. But I'm using this as an example. I think maybe he might grade out as like a C minus three star player type of guy. But, you know, on the off chance, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he grades out as a five star A minus type of guy. We'll see. Well, Man City is currently top of the Premier League. Uh, Ole has the boys playing well, which is how we know this is a game and not real life. And today we're going to take our best shot at him. We got Guiad on goal, Michel Guayhi, Anderson, and Sessegnon as the defensive back four, Gallagher and Milivojevic as the midfielders, Zaha and Hughes as the attacking midfielders, Mateta and Edward up top as the strikers. Sessegnon's coming off injury. He's good for about 75 minutes. Olise is coming off injury. They're saying he's not exactly match fit, which is why I have Hughes starting at the top. But if Hughes does start to fall off, we can definitely bring on Olise. Well, this can only be good. Kickoff highlight, Zaha. All the way up to Edouard, too far for De Gea. Easy pickup for the keeper. He bombs it forward. I don't know what the heck happened there. And Greenwood scores. This is going to be one of those games, isn't it? I don't know what way he was doing, but it's obvious he was not playing defense. Fernandez. And they get a second goal in four minutes. Guiada kicking at the ground there like, yeah, no, it's not my fault. Really, it isn't. It's a tight angle. Greenwood did well to score there. Sessegnon, corner kick in, knocked away. Shaw runs it down, but he's dispossessed by Gallagher. Gallagher tries feeding Mateta. Mateta can't get to it in time. Basaka plays it back to De Gea, who plays it up. It bounces back and forth. Greenwood ends up with it. He's dispossessed by Mitchell. Nice defensive play by the youngster there. One shot. One shot. Is all we've had. Short kick. They sent it all the way back to De Gea. I'm not quite sure what is going on with that. Out to Juan Basaka. On the right. He crosses it in. Greenwood has his hat trick in 37 minutes. We are making him look like a freaking all-star. Jiminy. For some reason, one of my fans is acting up. I'm not quite sure why. Hopefully the noise reduction will take that sound out. If not, I apologize. Gallagher goes in with the tackle. You know, the last time we lost a midfielder, no, the last time we lost a defensive center back, we, we came back to win. I don't think that's going to happen here. I'm going to take Edward for Riedewald, bring Riedewald back, move Mateta to the center, confirm those changes. Gallagher apparently was on a 6.1 when he decided to do that because, you know, sliding 10 yards on the ground going in double-footed right in front of the ref is always a good idea.
Half the team was motivated by my thrown bottle, the other half was demotivated by my thrown bottle, which leads me to believe the demotive guys were the ones who were hit by the bottle as I threw it. Juan Basaka, driving forward. Long pass. Guiada drifts right out of the box to get it, centers it to Guayhi. Out to Mitchell, who picked up an injury. Okay. Zaha, back to Guayhi. I did not see the Mitchell injury. That must be new. I don't remember seeing that at the halftime. And he's dispossessed. Sancho. Runs up on it, holds it up, crosses it in front of Mitchell, and they score. Did he, he, he had to have been injured just right after the half started. I don't remember seeing that. We're going to bring Adamarola on for Mitchell. And that leaves me one sub. McTominay over to Pogba. Greenwood feeds Sancho, one-on-one -on -one with Guiada. Drifts right instead. Turns around, block shot from Fernandez. We had a very nice save. Don't know if the ball was going in, if he hadn't saved it, but still was a good effort. Corner kick in. Varane is there, and he heads it over the crossbar. Shaw to McTominay on the throw in. He gives it to Ronaldo, who tries bombing it in, but it's knocked away. Adamarola heads it away to no one in particular. Juan Basaka ends up with it after a back and forth with Pogba. He loses it to Zaha, who lumps the ball forward. Mateta. It's one against five there. Riedewald back to Guehi. Guehi over to Anderson. Anderson to Milvojevic. Over to Hughes. Hughes tries feeding Mateta, and Mateta can't get there before De Gea does. I don't know if that is Hughes' fault for the pass, Mateta's fault for not hustling, or De Gea just being a really good keeper. Oh, Greenwood denied his fourth goal of the game. On some decent defense. Somebody just went into the red. Remember what I talked about at the beginning of the episode where we play down to our opponent's level? In this case, we are not playing up to our opponent's level. And Varane got a goal after Pogba hit the post. And of course the goal is awarded. Why wouldn't it be awarded? Will Hughes is on a 5-9. Okay, you know what? Look at all the green over on Manchester's side. Oh, look, another corner kick. Fernandez. Ball's knocked away. Lingard's going to run it down. Pogba. To Lingard. Back to Shaw. Shaw centers it to Fernandez. Up to Van de Beek. Greenwood's there, and he gets his fourth. I feel like Denny Green, we are what they thought they were speech coming on. And actually, I'm reminded of a story, and I'm totally blanking on his name now, and I know I've mentioned this before. So if you've heard it on the channel, you, you, if, you've heard it, if you've been to the channel before, you may have heard this. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were an expansion team in the NFL. Olise hits the post. And he was offsides anyways. When an expansion team in the NFL, the expansion rules were a lot different back then. They literally got the dregs of the NFL world. The coach they brought came from UCLA, I want to say. And I'm totally blanking on his name. Now, the Bucks went winless their first 18 or 19 games in the NFL before they finally won. And it was after one of those losses. Oh, look, Greenwood gets a fifth. Unless he was offsides. And he wasn't. Of course he wasn't. Anyhow, um, his team was performing horribly. And a reporter asked him what he thought of his team's execution on the field. And the coach replied, I'm all for it. That's how I feel right now watching this. They're calling that onsides. And I was looking at the wrong player when I said that. I was looking at the guy down at the bottom who was not Mason Greenwood. Who single-footedly whipped us like we were red-headed stepchildren. And we lost at home, no less. Humiliation. That is a great word. We are utterly humiliated. And of course, this sets us up perfectly for the Carabao because we're coming off this huge loss here, which means... What the heck ever. Five to six days for Mitchell with a twisted knee. Sessignan made a debut. Gallagher suspended one match. Don't appeal. Gallagher, can I fine him additionally? 
Nope, that's not one of the options. Although he seemed very happy to see me. Hey, what do you want? What do you want, Gaffer? Yeah, I want you to reach into your pocket and pay me a hefty sum of money for that foul you committed. That's what I want. We got the Carabao against Middlesbrough in four days. Fun times. Very fun times. So, we got the scouting pack on Dabo. He's grading out as a C-. Uh, looks like... A half star current ability to two and a half star current ability. Potential ability is three and a half stars. Potential sky bet league one player. So definitely not for us. If we take a closer look at him, yeah, we can see some of the things have 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 improved a little bit. I'm still interested in what he will finally grade out as. I should have scouted him for two weeks the first time around. So uh, hopefully. Uh, next episode, I'll try and remember to take a screenshot or come back to him so we can see what he does grade out at. He's got potential, but they're saying, um, and this is something you got to take with a grain of salt, my 14 current ability, 14 potential ability scout in South America. Why is he scouting him? I have no idea because he's in oh, this game sometimes. Um, so I would say he's probably fairly accurate. He could be a little low. He could be a little high. But I would bet that's probably pretty good. And even if he is low, that means he's just a you know championship player, which is not Premier League. And frankly, I can't afford to have those guys on my bench. So we'll take one look. We'll, we'll scout him out fully. We'll see what he. We'll see what he fully grades out as. And um, I'm fairly sure, at least off this initial report, we're not going to sign him. But I want to follow up with it anyways. Well, I'm hoping we can get ourselves right against Middlesbrough. Uh, Zaha is unhappy still because I sold uh, Kuyate. <sighs> I really like Zaha. I think he's a great player in real life, and I'm, I'm yeah, having having read about him and listened to his interviews and seen his interviews and stuff like that. He's a very pleasant human being. In the game, I'm not too fond of him. And that's a problem for some people, where they cannot separate the person from the game. And that, however, is not me. On the other hand, if players do make dumb mistakes from time to time, I have no problems letting them go, especially if they keep on doing it. Mitchell's still injured. He is not full health. Sessigny, on the other hand, is fine. He's not exactly fit-fit, but he's fit. You know what? We're going to live dangerously. We're going to bring in Adler Nascimento for Christian Benteke. Benteke is on the bench, which means Nascimento is going to be on the bench. But everything I felt, everything I said about Zaha, the absolute, uh, uh, the absolute opposite uh, applies to Benteke. I mean, I, I'm sure he's a positive guy. I'm sure he's a nice fellow. Just for whatever reason, I just cannot stand him in the game. If I didn't know any better, I'd say Middlesbrough Stadium is bigger than Selhurst. Laria to Piero. Back to Fry. Hugh steps up, Piero recovers, Sparar feeds uh, Leah Slicky, and he hits the crossbar. Holy cow. That was a heck of a spin on the ball, too, before it went out of bounds. And that is George wanting outside. You may kind of sort of see him in the background there. Wait for breaking the action. I'll pause this and then let him out, and then uh, we'll pick it back up again. Milivojevic to Sessignon to Elise. Elise, nice turnaround. Sessignon running free. No help, though. Crosses it in. Mateta's there and heads it over the crossbar. George outside getting his bark on with the evening coffee clatch. And Leah Silky scores on a header from a set piece. Nice delivery by Piero. Part of me is beginning to think if Zaha doesn't pick it up by the January transfer window, we'll look at moving him and just take the take the loss on his transfer fee. A lot of it depends on who else is out there. If I can get a loan player in to replace him or a replacement that I can bring on and is younger and is almost as good as Zaha is now, but can be better than him in the future, we'll take a look at that too. Could also just bring in a placeholder for a year or two. Not quite sure what happened there, but Milivojevic ended up with the ball. I got a lot of guys with a lot of yellow cards, and I'm not quite sure why. Hughes, long pass, right to a Middlesbrough player. The keeper bombs it forward. Tompkins has it down to Hughes. Hughes bombs it forward. Mateta's there, and he scores off the post. Was he onside? Yeah. 
You know, he was. It was a nice score by the woodwork. Good assist by Mateta. And we equalize right before the half. Yeah, they're going to check the tight offsides. And he was not the target. The guy on the right was offsides, but he was not the target. What do we tell the guys? Done well so far. They don't believe me. 60 minutes in the game, I got four players with yellow cards. This is not good. Uh, we're going to keep Milivojevic on. Sessegnon's going to come off. Mengi's going to come on. Tompkins is going to come off, except he can't. Gwei, he can't come off because I don't have replacements for him. That is poor planning on my part. Reedwald can play defensive center back. So we're going to get Tompkins off. And replace him with Admirola. We ought to taps it over to Rewald. Up to Milivojevic. Back to Rewald. Over to Mengi. Mengi feeds Elise. Elise to Edward. Edward, long pass. Matetic got by the defender and he absolutely skies it. That was a horrible, horrible miss. I think maybe the keeper rushing him kind of freaked him out. We're going to demand more here. Zaha to Edward. Edward back to Guayi. Guayi to Adamarola to Hughes to Edward. Avoids the tackle. Back to Guayi. The goal is the other direction, people. Hughes. All the way back to Guayata. What the heck is this backwards passing? Riedewald. Milivojevic. Out to Zaha. Chests it down. Holds it up. Then drives forward. Back to Adamarola to Hughes. Milivojevic. Edward, Elise, feeds Mateta. Who skies it again? Holy cow. Okay, we're going to take a look at... I got a note saying that Zaha was kind of tired, so we'll take a look at that. Zaha is... Definitely not playing up to form. We're going to bring Ayu on, and... I did not want to do that. Uh, cancel. We're going to bring Ayu on and then switch Ayu with Olis. And then with 10 minutes left in the game, we're going to go attacking. Olis. Mateta off the crossbar. Ayu sends it in again, but Stojanovic is right there to stop it. I think Mateta has had three woodwork hits today. It seems like three woodwork hits. Well, no, he's had the one woodwork hit. I don't know that they're counting that one. And then he's had two moon shots with a completely open goal in front of him. So Ivanovic bombs it forward. It's headed away. Adam Arola picks it up. Gets the ball up to Elise. Long pass. Edward was he offsides? Doesn't matter. So Ivanovic made a very nice save. Four minutes of injury time. Corner kick. Delivery by Elise. Edward's there, but he heads it right. And we're going to penalties. Okay, this is new for me. We're going to add IU. We're going to add Mateta. Milivojevic, who is probably one of the better penalty kick takers in the game, hits it. Come on, Guiata. I do like that they sped this up a little bit, too. Sporar. And he outdeeks Guiata. Edward. Nice. Keeper guessed right, but Edward powered it past him. Payero. No hesitation on Piero's end. And Guiata also doesn't exactly guess right. It looks like it went straight while he dived right. Elise stepping up. He's a very good set piece taker as well. No hesitation. Absolutely blasted in with the left foot. McNair. And of course, George is pounding on the door now, wanting to be let in. What timing. McNair. And he hits the post. Are you? And he puts it away. Uh, 
Leo Saliki comes up to take the shot. If Guiata blocks it, we win. If he doesn't block it, we still have a chance to win. <sighs> Jean-Philippe Mateta. He of the two moon balls, and the only goal we've had in the game, is up to put the game away. Taking his time, coming up to the ball. Keeper teasing him. Doesn't stop, and he puts it high and in. And we win in the third round of the Carabao Cup. And I'm really happy about that. I don't know that it should be because it's the third round of the Carabao Cup. But Mateta redeemed himself. 14 shots, 5 on target for us. 6-2 and two for Middlesbrough. 3 clear-cut chances, 2 half chances. Really good possession. 1 block shot, 1 woodwork hit. That really ought to be 2 woodwork hits. And then there's 2 balls in low-earth orbit from Mateta's foot. And that was a solid, solid win for us. This episode's a little long. I talked about a lot. There's a lot of information in it. Hope some of it's helpful to you. Um, we're going to take a look at what we're going to do next here. I'm going to save the game first. I'm going to let George in too. I'll be right back. Okay, so we have our Carabao Cup fourth round coming up here in a little while. So what we'll probably do is play that and then Villa. And come back for something here. It's a lot of games in a short amount of time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven games in 28 days. Man City, Tottenham, maybe something like that. I don't know. We'll figure it out after the Villa game. So a good episode. A not so good episode. We had to scrape a win out at Millsboro. We got absolutely thrashed by Mason Greenwood and his 10 friends at Man United who just thumped us 6-0. We were on a high. We got... We got brought back down to earth as it stands. We are currently in 10th place along with three other teams. So tied for ninth, I should say. And there's already a distinct difference between the haves and the have-nots. And Everton is... Wow. Tottenham, too. Interesting. Strange things are afoot in the world of FM. Taken as a whole, we're doing okay. As a microcosm of today's episode, oh my god, that was horrible. So we need to improve, and we will improve. We're going to scout our tails off. We're going to find some youngsters. We're going to find some value on the market. Maybe bring in some players on trials and free agents, see if we can't get some depth. It's the one thing that's really hurting us now, in addition to my inability to properly stack the bench, um, which leads to things like, you know, Rudewald playing defensive center back. Way to go, Jellico. But, you know, we got lucky there. So we'll come back for whomever we're playing in the fourth round in Aston Villa. And, uh, you know, if we're in the same position mid-table then that we are now, I will be perfectly happy with that. Uh, if you did like what you've seen and heard, please leave a like. Subscribe to the channel for more comments, questions, criticisms, comments. Leave those down below. I'd be interested in your guys' feedback on screen flow and its uses and helping you. You know, any and all feedback is appreciated. My name's FM Jellicle. I thank you.